Hey everybody. First off, I'd like to start the show by thanking Tide Wee for paying for the show. I have a lot of people ask me questions about hunting flatland and specifically how to locate buck bedding and where to hunt. And really it's a lot easier than it seems. What I want to talk about in this video is isolated beds by water. Beds isolated between water and dry land. And I always tell you how they don't bed in water, but they like to be surrounded by water. Take a look at this bed. It doesn't matter if you're hunting big woods or you're hunting um, flat farming areas or swamps or marshes. The overall best big buck bedding revolves around water. Water edge in thick cover. Cattail marshes, dogwood marshes, little potholes, uh, even bigger areas. And really, um, finding those beds is not a difficult task. It's really kind of easy. You can look at a huge map of a huge area, say an entire marsh or swamp or, or whatever, and all you really have to look at to find that isolated bedding is that transition of water meets dry land. Now that water has to be in cover, I mean, you can't be a lake up against the woods, but say cattails meets woods where the water in the cattails meets the dry land, where the water in the dogwood meets the dry land, where the flooded, swampy, grassy nastiness meets the dry land. That's the edge you have to scout. Now, when you walk that line, that edge, what you're looking for is sign going in and out. Don't pay no attention to big rubs up on hills and, you know, over on the edge of a, of a food plot or a, a farm field or in the acorn flats. What you need to pay attention to is the sign that's on that edge. Look at the trails going out into the marshes, into the swamps, into the water. Follow them. So here's the willow tree here in the swamp, and I'm parked right there, almost within bow range. A heavy trail coming in here. And uh, sure enough, here's the bed. See if there's like an isolated tree out there. Those isolated trees often have beds right underneath them because there's a little solid piece. So what they really want is they want a small piece of dry land surrounded by water in thick cover. And that is the number one hot bedding spot for big bucks for me. Looking back at most of my, my biggest bucks, that were shot on flat land came from isolated bedding in the water. If there is no isolated water, they're going to get on like a bend in a river. They're going to get into the oxbow where they have water as escape. They're going to get on the edge of water. If there's no high spots out there, they're going to get right on the edge where they can just dive in. But they want that water for escape. There's many reasons why they probably do this. Humans don't like water. They don't like getting their feet wet. Oh. 
predators don't like water. They don't like going through the water after these bucks. Now, if they get up on an isolated little hump in them swamps, they can hear you coming for a mile. They don't use the smell and wind and scent as much as they do sound in those spots. So they get thick cover on a little mound out in the middle of that nastiness. That arrow went in here, went through both along through the heart and into the far shoulder. And that buck actually made it back to his bed. If you look, here's his rub. Look how high that is. And here's the high spot that he lays in. His feet are actually folded underneath him. You see that? He was bedded here. I mean, just try walking through the stuff. Listen to the sound of your feet. You sink up to your knees. You're fighting. So what you want to do is get right on the edge of that water and hunt them when they come out. Now, those beds might be shallow. They might be by the road. They might be on the edge of a trail. They might be anywhere out there. And they also might be remote. They might be in the middle of a marsh or a swamp. Say a big island out there, you know, a five-acre island or something. But where the people make the mistake there is they think they're bedded right on that island. They're not. The size of the hump of ground coming out of the water has to be small. So the size of a truck or smaller, I'd say, is probably ideal. That doesn't mean there's not several of those humps around. You know, several spots that come up like that. And the buck has beds on each one of them. And several bucks come in there and bed at different times on each one of those. But they're not going to bed in the middle of a five-acre island. That's, they lose their safety factor. You can get close to them again. So all the way around them, they want that water within a very short distance. Some of the spots are easy access. You can walk to them. Some of them are right alongside the road. Some of them are a little harder to get to. Some of them we take canoes up uh, canals. Some of them I take kayaks back. I've actually adapted a kayak to hold a tree stand on the front and my sticks and stuff. So that I can get back into some really remote stuff where I have to go through such narrow pieces of water that I can't get a boat, but yet there's deer back there. I think a lot of people don't realize the crap those deer live in. They think deer are woods creatures. They're not. Deer live in and around water. They love it. They'll be out in the middle of a swamp. I've seen them get up on, uh, on these brush humps from an island watching them and walk into water where they got to go a mile to hit land. They navigate through those swamps. And if you don't believe me, you get out in those cattail marshes and look around. Get out in those swamps and look around, those floating bogs, and look at the amount of deer trails you find out there. The amount of deer sign you find out there. It's amazing. They're living out there. And that's where they are during daylight where you're seeing all the sign around food sources and rubs and stuff up on the hills is where they are in the dark. Do you hunt deer in the dark or do you hunt deer in daylight? You have to hunt deer where they live during the day. It's common sense. This is a good sign. All on a trail going, coming out of the island. There's good browse. I mean, you look at that, that's good browse. There's, everything's chewed down here along this trail. got tracks on it. Now I gotta really be quiet. Look at that. There's even duckweed down there. Arrowhead. Look at that. There's even arrowhead down there.
this ain't too solid. Just gotta make it to that island without drowning. You run into a lot of people who have not gone through these swamps who've gotten into a little bit once or twice and they're really leery of them. You walk on that floating bog and your feet are going up and down like this, like you're walking on a waterbed. You poke a leg through or something and people get scared. But really, there's nothing to really to fear out there. You can always crawl yourself out of, out of those holes and stuff as long as you're in good health. The most dangerous time to be out there is when it's frozen. Because then you can't feel those weak spots coming. Oh man, that one's got water in my boots. And there's always hot spots out there. There's always spots that are not frozen. Where you'll have open water, even though there's 8 inches of ice a couple feet over. You gotta be careful when you're walking on these marshes. You might be on 6-7 inches of ice, and there'll still be open spots because rotting vegetation under the ice uh, keeps the water warm. And look at this. So here we're on six or eight inches of ice right here. Look at that. Open water. Right there. Gotta watch where you step. Um, or a thin layer of ice that you can't tell. And those are the kind of spots where you can get out over spots that are over your head and break through. But if you stay close to uh, cattails and the brush and stuff, those roots and stuff, you know, hold that floating bog together and you can always get out of that stuff. If you get out into an open vegetationless area with frozen ice, you could get yourself in trouble. Who's, who's crazier, me for crossing that or you for following me? <laughs> I'm not answering that. Going where deer go, back in those marshes and swamps, and where they live, is not an easy task. You're going to make a lot of noise. You're going to get into stuff that's, you know, well over your boots, up to your knees, to your waist, and you're going to make a lot of noise. So you really have to pre-scout these areas, think about how you're going to get in there and stuff, really look for a route into spring or, or, or winter time, plan a route, and then in fall have that memorized, have a notebook or something that you keep these spots in, and then you have a route to get in there, pre-planned, and a spot you're going to hunt pre-planned. You cannot fumble around in this stuff during hunting season trying to figure it out while the deer are bedded there. That just don't work very well. It has to be pre-scouted. Everybody wants me to put a number on how far to set up from a bedded buck. And I guess the relative number is 50 to 100 yards in a swampy type area. However, you can't really put a number on it because it's really more about getting to that bed in the springtime. Looking from that deer's perspective and thinking about where can he hear me from, where can he see me from, where can he smell me from. What can he see? Yeah, I mean, you t sit there and you look out and you say, okay, he's going to spot me in that tree. He's going to spot me in that tree. Maybe I got to get on the ground. Maybe I got to be this. Maybe I got to be that. But you figure out from that deer's perspective how you can get close and how close you can get. And then that's where you go. You go right to that edge and that's where you hunt. And that's a necessary spot because... A lot of times, I'm 75, 100 yards from these beds, which is probably about average. I see or hear that buck get up, and it's well before dark. By the time he gets to me, it's just about closing time. If you're 200 yards back, you're not killing that deer. Period. What do you think, Dave? 
Holy crap. <laughs> Jesus. I told you he's a good one. He's got to be 21 inside, maybe. Yeah, I just think he's a little bit whiter than he thought. So it's a matter of getting as close as you can. Now, granted, there are occasions when that deer gets up early, moves early, and goes five, 600 yards in daylight. I mean, if they didn't do that every now and then, average guys would never kill a buck, period. So they do make mistakes. But what you want to do as a hunter is hunt where they always get to. You'll have your highest amount of success doing that. We've talked about how these deer bed on transitions, by lone trees, the points coming off of islands, in where those little humps are. But one thing we haven't talked much about is dry cattails. And when you get in these marshes, there's going to be spots in those cattails where they're a little elevated and they're drier. And you're going to find little bedding areas out in those cattails that you cannot see from shore or from out in the cattails. It just looks like cattails. Wow, that's a nice bed. Look at that. But nobody's home. Sometimes you can see them on aerial maps. You'll see the spidering trails coming in and out of a certain area. And I found quite a few of these bedding areas doing that. But keep in mind that sometimes they're just out in the middle of those cattails. Oh, yeah, it's done. It's a broken guy. Maybe even 11. Right to the neck. Oh, it's a 12 pointer. Look at it. You just didn't have the <laughs> nice job. last one. When you're having a hard time even walking through these marshes, getting a deer out can be pretty tricky. It can be pretty rough. I mean, when you're sinking a leg through to your waist and stuff, it's hard. So the best way we've found over the years to get these deer out of these wet areas and these nasty spots is to use a sled. Now let's face it, you shoot a deer coming out of a bed, going up onto dry land, his escape is 99% of the time going to be straight into the nastiness, into the water. And that's, you know, they got the dry land here, they got the bed here. The dry land here, they got the bed here. And this is just nastiness. What are they going to do? They're going to run to nastiness. That's why they got that bed there. Escapes behind them. That's a big key factor in these beds, is having good escape behind the bed. They're not going to bed where it's open grass behind them. They're not going to bed where it's a lake behind them. They're not going to bed where it's open forest behind them. They're going to bed where they can just run into a nasty, thick tangle and hide. So when they die in there, Getting them out, the best method is to strap them into a hard plastic sled and pull them out. Okay, so we used the sled to get the deer out of the swamp because uh, uh, a cart and stuff won't go through the cattails. But now we got a cart, we just put the sled on the, on the cart and strapped it in, and now we can go across the high ground the rest of the way to the, to the truck. A lot of these places where you find cattails, you'll find uh, a transition within the water, like where dogwood meets cattails, um, tamarack trees meet cattails, brush of some sort meets cattails. A lot of the bedding, if there's water on both sides, will be right on that edge, on, on the little humps coming out of the ground. So really take a close look at that edge between dogwood, tamaracks, and cattails. In conclusion, Remember next time you're out scouting flat land to concentrate on beds surrounded by water and thick cover. Thanks for joining us. Remember to hit subscribe and share this video with your friends. See ya. Ready looks like you might have pissed his pants over there. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh.
I'm not knocking any other tree stand manufacturers or climbing stick manufacturers. They've got good products, so don't take this wrong. But they weren't built for me. Now, I learned long ago that most of the bucks that I kill, the very big ones, are on the first time I ever sit a spot. Those bucks pattern you really quick, the mature ones. So I'm mobile. I move around a lot. And when you're walking way back into these public lands like this, as you can see my old ass is out of breath already, you need mobile gear that's lightweight. And when we get into thick cover and close to the deer, it's gotta be quiet. Three second rub. 